one of the parents of one of our local uh, diabetics, she had posted in one of these other diabetes Facebook communities, what other conditions do people's children have? So I'm reading through a lot of them and I'm seeing so many people who say ADHD. And that was, I had never thought that there was a connection. I still don't know what a connection there is, if any. Um, but at least I started to see that there's enough people that there's got to be a need to have discussion around what it means to have both conditions. ADHD Rewired episode number 62. This is the show designed to help those of us who have really good intentions and a slightly wandering attention. My name is Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, coach, and consultant. We know that starting can be the hardest part, so let's get started. But first, let me thank our sponsors. Do you need an easy way to connect with people virtually, but don't want to be hassled by downloads that don't work, connections that are complicated? Go to erictivers.com slash Zoom and check out truly what I think is a revolutionarily easy to use video conferencing platform. That's erictivers.com slash Zoom. Today's podcast is brought to you by audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial. Go to audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Check show notes for link. Welcome back to another episode of ADHD Rewired. I am really excited for today's guest um, because she's really become a, a, a close friend of mine um, over the last few months, I, I think it's been. Um, so you actually know her as the the ADHD rewired voice of Audible. Um, she also goes by the master. At least that's what Audible calls her. Um, her name is Carolyn Dargenio. Um, and you, you, the, the, the apostrophe after the D is silent, as I've figured out after having to out myself later on for not knowing how to pronounce your last name. That so, was funny. Carolyn, thank you for um, bailing me out when I didn't have a guest at the last minute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, let people know just a little bit about who you are, kind of what you do, and, um, and then we'll kind of go from there. Okay. Um, well, I am an ADHD coach. I'm also a college professor. I've been that for 16 years now. Found out I had ADHD when a student informed me that I had ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> and that led to me looking into it, what it really meant, which led to me taking courses at the ADD Coach Academy and um, has really led to this whole transition from going to uh, working as a professor to being a coach full time, which has really also been helpful because my um, youngest son, who is seven, has type 1 diabetes. And the university that I was working at, 90 minutes away, it's difficult to be far away in the event that something happens. I've got a great support system here with my husband and my mother in law. But every day there's the potential for something to happen. And I just felt like I needed to be closer to home in order to be more involved. And coaching allows me to do that. And it's so incredibly rewarding, too. So, um, you know, you, you brought up uh, diabetes. And, um, you know, about a month or so ago, I had uh, uh, reached out to you in regards to a current client that I was working with um, who has uh, T1 diabetes and um, you know, just needing some more information. And so the reason I really wanted to, to uh, talk this week about um, diabetes. Um, it's actually been kind of a hard week for me. Uh, this this client who I've been working with for, I think about four or five years. Um, uh, he this week he tragically died um, from uh, from his diabetes. Um, 
And um, so it's been a really, um, it's been a rough week. Um, and so I'm trying to kind of make sense of, of that. And there's, you know, just learning as much as I can and seeing it, you know, trying to understand what the connection is uh, between um, uh, diabetes and, and ADHD and, um, you know, and other disorders as well, because, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot that I didn't know um, that was very helpful for me to learn. Um, so I just think that whether or not there is a clear connection between uh, type 1 uh, diabetes and ADHD, from my understanding, we're still kind of investigating that. It sounds like there might be. Um, but I think uh, for me, just in sort of honor of uh, my, my, uh, my client, I wanted to touch on this uh, this week. Yeah, and you know, there's a lot of people who don't understand ADHD. We understand that part. Mm -hmm. But there's also a lot of people who don't understand type 1 diabetes. You know, when most people think about diabetes, they think about type 2 diabetes. And, you know, really like 90% of all diabetics are type 2. So um, I find as a parent of a type 1 diabetic that a lot of times people will come up and they'll ask questions um, or they'll look at me funny if I'm if I'm giving him you know candy or, or juice or something like that they don't understand that type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease whereas type 2 is is metabolic um, meaning break that down a little bit yeah uh, well type 1 diabetes is called type 1 diabetes now, but the popular way to describe it was juvenile diabetes, mm -hmm. only they realize that it doesn't go away and the juveniles do grow up. Mm -hmm. And there's a parallel there Kinda where they like do. ADHD, yeah. 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 Um, and there's, an, there's also a lot of, in popular ADHD uh, literature about medication you know, whether you should medicate or not, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of, a lot of times they'll use diabetes as a comparison. Like, would you, you wouldn't stop giving your, your kid insulin on weekends, would you? So uh, I, I've done a lot of searching the, the web for ADHD and type one diabetes connections too. And a lot of what comes up are those sorts of examples of using managing type 1 diabetes to managing ADHD. And I understand the need to use that as a comparison, but at the same time, they it's, it's really, really different. Mm. Where, you know, whereas with ADHD, you've got it, you've got severe cases, you've got mild cases, you have some people who can function fine without medication, others who really need Can't, the medication. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Which right now I am unmedicated. And, I, and I'm half medicated. I, I only <laughs> so, took half my dose today. And if we have time, we'll, we'll talk about why later on. Um, but with type 1 diabetes, no, I can't choose to give less medicine. I can't choose to give no medicine because he he needs to have insulin in order to live. Uh, people with type 1 diabetes, their pancreas either um, produces very, very, very little insulin or no insulin at all. People need insulin to live. Insulin is what takes and turns what you eat into energy to fuel the cells of your body that are responsible for everything. Everything in your body needs to run on something. And insulin is like the little carrier that takes it from the foods that you eat and, and turns it into um, the fuel that you need for your body. Mm. People with type two diabetes their pancreas, pancreases, pancreai, <laughs> Pancreum, whatever, <laughs> they still produce some, they're just not enough. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times you'll see that that's what, you know, um, type 2 diabetes is something that will occur later in life 
for most people. It is also something that if your doctor tells you you have uh, you are pre-diabetic, they're referring to type 2 diabetes, mm-hmm. and at that point, you may be able to prevent it mm-hmm. by diet and exercise. Mm-hmm. I know there's a correlation between it because we know there's a correlation between obesity and ADHD, um, which, you know, it's it's. I think it's not that hard to understand the, the some of the reasons why impulse control, um, you know, mm-hmm. that, that seeking of, of stimulation. Um, so, but, but type one is completely different. No. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, they're, they're really not sure what causes diabetes, but for type one, it's sudden onset. Um, Alex, Mm. my son, he was two years old when he was diagnosed. Uh, you know, he was otherwise a, a healthy little boy. What were some of the signs? Um, I actually think because he was still in diapers, it was easier for us because um, the two signs that come up, uh, you, you know, as most noticeable is increased thirst and increased urination. Mm. So being that he was two years old and he was still drinking from bottles, you know, like we, he had to ask. So we were really able to notice that he was drinking more and he was wetting through his nighttime diapers really quickly, Mm -hmm. like within an an hour. And then they get kind of lethargic. Their breath starts to take on a fruity smell. Mm. Um, Yeah, he, they just, they might be sweaty. You know, if it goes on a a while, they might start to lose weight really fast. Uh, That didn't happen with, with Alex. And I think Honestly, it was because he was so young and we were able to recognize very early the increased frequency in urine output mm-hmm. and thirst. Um, this is only because my husband has a has a cousin um, who was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when she was um, preteen or early teen years. And I remember hearing the story of how thirsty she was when she would when she went in to be diagnosed. It, they went through the drive through of McDonald's and got a supersized soda. And by the time they went to the doctor's, which was around the corner, it was already gone. You know, so mm. having that in mind, we had actually went over to my um, my father in law's house. He's type two diabetic. And he had the machine that you prick their fingers and mm-hmm. get the blood out. So, um, well, I didn't, my husband was there. He did it, and and the machine just said hi. Mm-hmm. So it only it only reads up to a blood glucose level of six hundred. And to put that in perspective, they they want right now him, and this is a little bit on the higher side, but they really want him to be around 150. Mm -hmm. If you were to take yours right now, yours would probably be between 80 and 120. Okay. So we called this pediatrician and they're like, go right to the hospital. And it's like, do we want to go to the hospital in town or do we want to go to the one that is like an hour away, but it's a dedicated children's hospital. And they're like, get to the closest hospital that you can. Hmm. So that meant go to our local hospital. And once they stabilized him, then he got his first ambulance ride to the children's hospital. Mm. And you know, life was totally different after that. I remember the doctor saying, you know, you, you work dad. Yes. You work mom. Yes. Well, that's going to change. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And then the doctor said also, this is the emergency huh. room doctor, not the endocrinologist mm-hmm. who we we really love. But the emergency room doctor um, said, well, the good thing is that he's so young, he'll never know what it's like not to have diabetes. Mm. And we're like, that's not a good thing. Mm. No, the good thing is that hopefully in his life, there's going to be a cure. Like, I don't want him to know nothing except diabetes. Um, in the diabetes community, we've really grown to make a lot of connections with people, and I'm in a ton of Facebook groups. Uh, you mentioned that you have a, uh, a secret Facebook group. I do um, for uh, for people with with uh, T1 diabetes and ADHD. Yes, do you and want to talk this a little bit group, about that. Sure. Um, one of the parents 
of um, one of our local uh, diabetics who um, I'm, I'm trying not to give information away mm-hmm. that would reveal identity, but she's a, she's a mom to a local uh, teenager who has type one diabetes. She had posted in one of these other diabetes Facebook communities, what other conditions do people, do people's children have? So I'm reading through a lot of them and I'm seeing so many people who say ADHD. Hmm. And that was, I had never thought that there was a connection. I still don't know what a connection there is, if any. Um, but at least I started to see that there's enough people that there's got to be a need to have discussion around mm-hmm. what it means to have both conditions. So this was probably, oh, September, maybe. Yeah, September. So I started this group on Facebook and it's called Shiny and Sweet ADHD and T1D. And, you know, it's for people who have um, diabetes and ADHD in the same family. Many of them, they're they're in the same person in the same family. Mm -hmm. Um, And also, I mean, you're a member. There's a lot of coaches who are members who... Um, can help provide support, but a lot of times the families um, who are represented, they support each other. Mm-hmm. Too. Um, I, I made it a secret group because um, some of the parents early on requested that mm-hmm. so it wouldn't show up mm-hmm. because, you know, there is some st- unfortunate stigma around not the type 1 diabetes, but the ADHD mm-hmm. part. Yeah. Um. And I had a, a question and I, I lost it. <laughs> I completely lost it. Um, I was, and I was just thinking about how for the person with T1 diabetes who has to, uh, you know, remember to, to check their levels and to take, um, and take insulin, um, with ADHD, even if there's not necessarily a correlation between like there's a, you know, if it's not right. necessarily higher than uh, with ADHD in the public, it just any kind of anything that's a chronic condition that you have to manage through throughout the lifespan with ADHD creates its own set of challenges. Uh, well, you know, I think type one diabetes is really unique in the amount of challenges. If my son was home right now, I would show you what we have to carry with us everywhere. Uh, you know, as a parent with ADHD, this also poses challenges, you know, and if you have a child who's type one diabetic and ADHD, odds are there's a parent also who has ADHD. And it does make it challenging to just um, get everything in order that you have to bring with you at all mm. times. I mean, every time he leaves the house, we have to make sure that he has his testing kit and that in that testing kit, he's got his alcohol swabs. He's got his um, lancets to poke his finger with. Um, right now, he's on an insulin pump, but we still have to make sure we have backup syringes in there just mm-hmm. in case that something doesn't work right with the pump so that we can still get mm-hmm. insulin out of the pump. We've got to make sure um, before that, though, we had to also carry his insulin on an ice pack or with an ice pack to keep it cool. Oh. Um, we have to make sure that we have what's called glucagon. It's an emergency kit. If he drops too low, it's something else that, that we have. It's another, it's a syringe. We have to make, like break up this tablet and put it in this, you know, and then do a deep tissue injection. Wow. Uh, so we always have to have that with us. We always have to have something for him to drink because when he gets high and I mean, high in terms of blood glucose level, which I forget about sometimes. And in the grocery <laughs> store, people look at me funny when I say, you know, to my older son, get, get your brother something to drink because you're, he's high. <laughs> 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 They're like, what? <laughs> yeah, he gets thirsty when he's high, you know? <laughs> Does he also need something sweet too? To <laughs> Yeah, not when he's high. Um, but when he's high, he's he's thirsty, so you know he has to have something that doesn't have a lot of carbs. And then we've got to give him some insulin right then. And when he's low, we have to um, we have to either carry glucose tabs or little tubes of frosting, um, gummies, 
I mean, I'm going to be the coolest mom ever when I'm older because I'm going to have this massive bag full of snacks you know, that I need to ha- carry to keep him alive. You know, but it's going <sighs> to, you know, easily. Uh, anyway, back to this like bag. So we've got this, we've got the snacks, we've got low juices. When he's high, he gets low juices. And by low, I mean low carbohydrate. And when he's low, he gets high juices. So I mean high carbohydrate. And so let me ask you, what what are some of the things that that you do to help yourself with making sure you have, because it, I mean, it sounds very high maintenance. Um, So it is extremely uh, high maintenance. And I, I really do give my husband a lot of kudos and credit for his role. Um, it is something that we, I mean, we have to check Alex during the night Mm -hmm. a couple times, Mm -hmm. um, because he's just not at a point where he, he doesn't, maybe this is because he was so low or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, so young when he was diagnosed, but he doesn't recognize when he goes low, Mm -hmm. he doesn't show symptoms. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't express that. So we have to test him more, Mm -hmm. but during the night, there've been a couple of nights when he's gone really low and like dangerously low. So, I mean, my husband does most of the nighttime checking. It's, you know, it's, it's hard for me to, to not, not that it's okay for my husband to not sleep, but I, in addition to ADHD, I have fibromyalgia. So I, I don't really get into the REM Mm -hmm. mode of sleep very easily. So I'm really appreciative of my husband taking over the nighttime stuff, but it's very hard on him. Um, You know, but between him and my mother-in-law who also really helped manage, I mean, it's just the constant trying. It's almost now that it's, it's very habitual. Very rarely do I, um, ever leave the house without the diabetes bag. You know, it, it's, mm-hmm. in fact, there was a time even, um, a, a couple of years ago when there was a small appliance fire in the house and, you know, I quick got the kids out and it was just instinct, grab the diabetes stuff, go. That's for a whole Wait, is this, I think you were telling me about, there was something that was in the toaster? No, you're confusing this with that, with um the show, on, um, the Tom Nardone show. You're right. With the mouse on the toaster. <laughs> Mine was a popcorn machine. Like I wanted, we have a fancy popcorn machine downstairs, like in the home theater room, you know, but... I wanted an old fashioned air popper machine. So I get my kids and I set them down and I'm like, this is how we used to make popcorn. And it was brand new. I read the instructions. I don't know why I read the instructions, but I did. And they're looking at it and it's smoking. But in the instructions, it said the first time you'll use it, some smoke will be, (laughs) will come out. So I'm thinking it's normal. But then I'm like, this is getting more and more. And then flames start shooting up. Oh my gosh. And the the smoke alarm's going off, and my like we had practice what to do. So my w- older son like jets out the house and goes towards the tree, and I'm like, "No, come back in, get your brother," because <laughs> <laughs> I'm grabbing the fire extinguisher to get it out. So I made the kid come back in and get his brother, <laughs> <laughs> which he which he did. But then you know, then they got out, and my instinct next was grab the diabetes stuff and just throw that out before you know i worry about anything else so i did put the fire out and it makes me i just finished the uh the audiobook um the uh the power of habit oh yes have you have you listened to that one i did what did you think of it Uh, that's that's the one that's yellow, right? Yes. It's yellow on the, the cover. The two circles, like with the man, yes. like spinning on a hamster wheel. I think. Oh. I think that's what oh. it's supposed to be. I, I always thought it was a step ladder, and I couldn't figure out. But that <laughs> makes much more sense. Um, I really liked that book, but I read it a really long time yeah. ago. Um, but yeah, it's very much a habit now where we, for everybody in the family, where we we the diabetes bag is just here. It is here. It is. For everyone, mm-hmm. you know, 
we can't we can't go without it any place yeah uh, and there's more stuff in that bag too including you know notes for now, i know that you were talking we were talking about um you're trying to get a um this uh device that yes. t- talk yes. about that because because okay. uh, you know as you know i like technology and this yes. seems like oh a- this is really neat what it can do um so we got Alex on an insulin pump about a little over a year ago. Now, prior to that, he would get six to eight injections a day. So mm-hmm. every time he would have to eat something that had more than 15 carbs in it, he would have to get an injection. And there's a lot of math that has to, I mean, you've got to calculate the carbs for everything he eats. And then if you really want to get technical with it, you have to make some adjustments based on how much of the insulin that you gave him prior was is still what they call on board. So the insulin pump um, now, now, you know, we just have to change, insert it into, it goes under his skin, change it every three days, but we've got a remote control for that to every time he eats something, we just put in how many carbs Mm. It takes care of all of the math adjustments. Oh, cool. You know, um, we just have to remember to do it. And, you know, if, this is where the ADHD comes into play is if you've got working memory impairment, like how do you remember what you ate and how many carbs were in it? I wonder if it could be like some kind of device that can almost know when your jaw is being activated. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I don't think they're there yet. Um, So we got that piece to it about like a little more than a year ago. That's going great. But there's another thing, another device it's, it's called a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor. Mm-hmm. Right now, we poke his finger about 10 times a day in order to get a little bit of blood out mm. so that we can test what his glucose level is. Uh, you have to do that before he eats, um, like during the night a couple times. Uh, what a continuous glucose monitor does is it doesn't monitor the blood, but it monitors the you know, other kind of fluid. I don't know what kind of fluid it is, but it's not blood. It's a, little, a different kind of fluid. Um, it, but it's also a device that would go underneath the, the skin and he would wear it on him and he would change that every couple of days, but it would, it would alert if he goes too high hmm. or too low. Like we set the parameters and there's an, an audible alarm, not like audible book club yeah. alarm. <laughs> No, I'm just, I mean, you know, when, as you're talk, as you're mentioning this, I'm just thinking about if, you know, if my client would have had that, you know, his life m- may have been saved. If he would have heard it. Um, well, the, could, could it have notified like his, his Well, here's mom, the interesting like, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. There's a couple of different, there's one, there's a, there's a, what's called a night scout, which is kind of almost, uh, it was, it was a, a the first sort of technology that came out that allowed the use of apps on people's Mm -hmm. um, smartphones. And this was, it was a grassroots movement by parents who just needed some way to get the information from that um, CGM monitor Mm -hmm. to wherever they were. Um, The one that we're trying to get for Alex now, um, only we've been denied but the one we're trying to get for him now is um, called the Dexcom, and it has what's called Share, and it uses an iOS-based app so that if he has this, it'll go to his iPod, even if he's at school, to an, and through an app there using Bluetooth technology. And then anybody um, in our family who has an Apple device can have an app where they can also through the Bluetooth, it can so we could get the the readings and be alerted if he's high or low. So, in the case of your client, if he had a CGM and he had like a Night Scout or um, you know some other f- form of like a Dexcom share, or there's one insulin pump that I think has something else that could be used. It's very similar. And he had that set up so that 
like his mother or something because your client was a little bit older he's yeah not... he was he was 20 he's gonna be 26 um, mm-hmm. so uh, if he his, wasn't his living mom lived, at home you know, maybe a mile or two i think away yeah so um if hypothetically they would have had this and he would have been wearing it at the time and they had it connected to the bluetooth thing to either mm-hmm. go to a night scout or go to the De- the dexcom sh- share through the apple app she would have been able to be alerted to it and mm. um what it does is it alerts as you start to trend so if he starts to trend really low or if he starts to trend really high it would alert so in the case of your client i was it he had dropped low I believe so. I believe so. So uh, as he started to drop low, sometimes you can drop low really fast, and there are a bunch of things that could that could um, influence the dropping, you know, to go quickly and go fast. Even if it got to the point where he didn't hear it, especially if he was sleeping, mm-hmm. he didn't hear it, um, you know, it, it could have gone off on his mother's end, and she could have you know, tried to call or called 911 from mm-hmm. there or, or driven there, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, uh, it's. Yeah, she, uh, all I know is that she, when she uh, went to um, his house, he, he was unresponsive. Um, and so you were denied for this? We were denied based on his age because um, they s- the only reason listed from the insurance company was that there was that because he was under the age of eight that he's seven right he just turned seven they had um cited one research study that used a group of uh, a group of people um but the research study that they cited didn't have the population, the younger population to test it on. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so we're can appealing it, that. But it's now. not going to be, it won't be paid for as of right now on your insurance. As of right now, it's not going to be paid for at all. So, Kaylin, uh, here, here's, here's what I'm thinking. Um, wait, 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 wait. Let me just okay. share one. Yeah, I want to just say that I did reach out to um, a DEX or to uh, one of these facebook communities mm-hmm. and there was a mom in there who um, helped me draft a really really great letter and she has told me that if anybody needs help that they can that i'm welcome to give out her information so if anybody's listening and you know they find that they are being denied for whatever reason we were just denied based on age mm-hmm. but if there's other reasons and if you need help you can put my my contact information and um i will get that person in contact with the woman who helped me she's given me permission to do this oh that's great and i'll link up that on the uh, on the show notes but yeah. what i was gonna what i was gonna say um and we ha- we have not talked about this this idea just kind of came to my mind and i uh, i want to go with it um you know there, there's no reason that uh if something can potentially be a life-saving technology is available um, that you should be denied that. Um, so you, you said it was a couple thousand dollars to to get this device, and then it's um, you know a couple more thousand to for the like the maintenance supplies. Is that basically yeah? What if we, as the in the ADHD rewired community and, and listeners? We organize a, a crowdfunding campaign to to get this paid for, so your son doesn't have to go without this. You're gonna get me all choked up right now because, well. <laughs> um, I I wouldn't know why. I'm, I don't even have <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have words right now. You know, um, and. I looked up a little bit about, you know, when, when learning about what had happened with your client, I was struck when I saw a statistic on, um, on the JDRF website that had said that one out of every 20 type one diabetics 
will die of, of hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar. And I remember, I think I was on the phone with you when I read it and I just stopped and was like, oh my God, one out of every 20. Hmm. I know that means 95% won't. But I also but know when, when it's your own kid and there's... Yeah, when we get together with these groups for, you know, walks and stuff, there's, you know, way more than 20 and to think one, you know, and I know that I've read just right after, I mean, this past week, there's somebody out in um, a city that's like an hour and a half from here who, who uh, an adult man, father of, of like three who had, who is in the hospital right now of because he he dropped too low while driving, you know, went into a seizure, got into a bad accident, you know, and I, I just never thought it was, I mean, one out of 20 is, it's very real. It's a very real number for me to see. So how much do you think it would cost to, to um, get your son the supplies he needs? I think three thousand. Okay. I believe that. Um, I mean, like I said, we are appealing it, and we'll know. We'll know within the next month. Okay. I would say. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to um, after we're we're off, um, I'm going to. I'm going to set up a, a page for a, um, a crowdfunding. I'm going to ask um, you know, the listeners to to contribute what you can. Um, we'll put it at, at three thousand dollars to help uh, your son get this, these supplies because um, a life that can be saved in a, in a for with a technology that's available. Um, you know, it's you know, thinking about the my client. It's this week. I mean, it's. Um, It just feels like it's the least that that we can do. I don't. I thank you. I I don't know what to say. Um, uh, he's dropped low a couple times, and you know we've been able to catch it. There's been only one time when he wasn't very. He. I mean, normally when he's low, even if he's sleeping, we can just put juice up to his mouth and he'll start to drink. But there was one time when he just he wouldn't even do that. And he kept dropping lower and lower and it was so scary, scary. but thankfully yeah. it was, and it was while he was sleeping, it was, you know, it was one of those times when, you know, thankfully we checked him while he was sleeping and I just made frosting that day. So it was like, you know, on the phone with the doctor, you know, getting frosting, rubbing it into his gums so that, you know, he could, cause he wouldn't drink mm. and that got him to to finally start to perk up but what what if what if we didn't test him that night I, I, what if we didn't because he was sleeping and we were sleeping because i mean it was probably two in the morning mm. uh, it, it's it is very real okay i'm gonna um i'm gonna to jump in to take a just a quick break and um yeah i'm gonna need to recoup yeah too. <laughs> me too um so uh we'll be we'll be right back um in just a moment support for this podcast comes from audible for a free audiobook download go to erictivers.com slash audible for a link for that free download and for some hand-picked recommendations, go to erictibbers.com slash audible for your free audiobook download. Get a Zoom room. Go to erictibbers.com slash Zoom. I use Zoom video conferencing for the ADHD rewired coaching and accountability group. Zoom makes video conferencing fun and easy. Share your screen, collaborate with a whiteboard, record the audio and video. It's ADHD friendly. Go free or go pro, but go to erictivers.com slash Zoom so they know that I sent you. That's erictivers.com slash Zoom. <laughs> Carolyn, we are back, and we, we actually did take a real break. Uh, we both kind of need to, to recoup from that a little bit. 
Um, so I'm going to ask just in, in uh, um, you know, because we're a little bit short on time here is what are the kind of most important messages, take home messages that you think uh, uh, listeners should really know in as far as what they can do if they need more information uh, in regards to diabetes um, and ADHD? Um, well, I highly recommend joining our, our group on Facebook. It's shiny and sweet. ADHD and T1D. Uh, my contact information is also going to be available in the show notes. Um, JDRF is a really good um, resource for um, type 1 diabetes information and um, CHAD and attitude for ADHD. There's very limited stuff out there on the two together. Mm-hmm. One of the, if I can just uh, mention a couple things quickly, mm-hmm. that um, through this group, uh, I've really become aware of some of the the unique needs of this ADHD T1D population. And a lot of, um, like the, the biggest area of concern is medication. Um, on the one hand, those of us who take ADHD meds, we know that in the beginning it, it affects appetite. Um, this is really something that you have to consider when your kid or you need to eat in order to have um, the carbs to stay alive. So, you know, you you might have to build in systems and structures and ways to remind yourself to eat when the medicine may affect your appetite. Um, The other part is when your, your child might go or you might go low, there's a tendency to reach for juice, but um, depending on what ADHD medication you're on, some of the juice, some of the gum, gummy snacks, fruit snacks, have um, vitamin C, have citric acids in them, and you know certain ADHD medications, their burn rates will increase when you have the, uh, those. So you know they'll hit you stronger, mm. and they won't last as long. You know, that's and- good information. Yeah. And then the other thing is, I know it's it's always a tough decision whether to medicate ADHD or not. And, it, you know, we we have to understand with type 1 diabetes, the amount of executive function skills, working memory mm-hmm. requirements needed mm-hmm. to manage this life-threatening um, disease. And uh, that that's really something that has to be factored into the decision of whether to medicate or not especially when it's your child, because Mm -hmm. we have to prepare our children for independent living. It sounds like having an accountability partner uh, to manage this would be a really important aspect um, of managing these two things together, especially, Um, you know, having someone to check in with throughout the day saying, yeah, I've I've checked. Have you checked like that? That just seems like it would be, you know, (laughs) yes, yeah, especially with, with with ADHD. I giggled now because I think of all of the all of the phone calls that go back and forth. <laughs> yeah, well, where are his numbers? Okay, what did he eat? Okay, what's he doing? Mm-hmm. Did you give him this? Did you? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. How is he acting? Oh, and that's another thing: behavior. When your blood glucose is out of out of whack, whether you're low or high, that impacts your behavior, your ability to concentrate. So, um, you know, the whole. Your ADHD, your typical ADHD symptoms that those of us who don't have type 1 diabetes feel, Mm -hmm. that sort of stuff comes on when your blood sugar's out of whack, you know, sir, or out of, when it is wacky, not when it's out of whack. (laughs) I don't know why we say that. I know, it's true. Uh, Because out of (laughs) whack actually means, or it's, or when it is out of whack. (laughs) But we don't. It is, you know what I mean. When speaking it's not of uh, speaking of words <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and language, since we only have a little bit of time, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, shift this conversation a little okay. bit because I I know that um, you know clearly this is something that you're very passionate about and invested in, and you could probably go on about this for. Oh, oh, and I'm sure we just hit the 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 iceberg. So yes, all right. So as I mentioned at the the beginning of the show, um, you know, you're the, the voice of, of Audible. Um, Audible is giving you giving you the name the master because of how many books you you listen to. And one of the things that um, we've been talking about, um, Carolyn and I, is the idea of creating a a kind of coaching based book club. And so um, for the few minutes that we have left here. 
Um, I just want to kind of talk with you about that and then kind of open it to, to listeners to respond to find out if this is something you would be interested in. So we're going to kind of do a little bit of a, a brainstorming uh, session. Uh, and then we have ta been talking about this for, um, for I don't know, a couple of months now. Uh, I mean, it's actually it's, our conversations began with talking mm -hmm. about this idea yes. and like many things that are related to ADHD morphed into many different things. Um, and now Carolyn is actually the, I suppose we'll just call it, we're trying to figure out what is her title. Um, she is my, I didn't like the name assistant, but that was the best we can come up with, with helping me write my book. Um, cause she is amazing at making me sound smart. Uh, when it comes to, <laughs> when it, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll write something and I'll send it to her and ask her to tweak it. And it's like amazing cause you, Karen, you get my voice, which I think is so cool. I'm like, how do you do that? Like, it really does look like I spent time writing this cause that's how I would say it, but you just did it in a very eloquent way and doesn't take you much time with me, for me writing the way that you make me sound like I write, um, it just comes naturally to you. So give yourself credit because you have to start with good ideas. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll accept that. So okay. thank you. So thank you. So um, right now with in that regard, you're taking my the, the episodes of the podcast and transcribing them. And I love what you, for, you first uh, <laughs> sent me an email uh, or a message saying, so I just transcribed episode five and it sounds great on the podcast, but it doesn't really <laughs> work. Way you read it. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. we're, you know we're we're kind of trying to to figure that that out. So Carolyn is uh, we, we've been working very closely. We're trying to figure out how we're we're doing this. But in the realm of a a book club, um, you know we have been playing around with some different ideas. Whether it's uh, focusing on a particular book. Now, Carolyn, you said that that you've seen some different models uh, for how yeah, coaches uh, use. When we first Talk started a bit talking about, about it, I went and I looked up a lot of the different ways that book clubs and coaching have been brought together and you know there there's a lot of variation though most tend to focus on one book and then work that book either over so there's some of them who will just spend you know one like two hour session on a book and i'm not sure that that's something that really would allow us to get into what the book means mm -hmm. as a person who has ADHD and is looking for changes based on on the premises in the book. But there there are others who will take a book and they might work through this one book over several weeks, looking at what the concepts are, what they mean, how they might be applied in an ADD friendly way. And when we were looking at some of the books and talking about some of the ideas to, to do this, there's a lot of books out there that are ADD specific, mm -hmm. but I mean, you and I both have found that some of the most rewarding books that we've read haven't been, you know, for ADD audiences right. only. Yep, exactly. Um, I mean, the one that I've just been now. completely like, you know, just in sort of infatuated with uh, is uh, is Brene Brown's uh, uh, Power of Vulnerability. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just uh, and I would love to do a, a really deep dive uh, into her work. Oh, yes. I mean, she's got some excellent books out there that have themes that are very the gift of imperfection. I mean, that was one of my first that was my first Brene Brown book. Mm. But I mean, caring so much of the shame and um, wondering why I'm different, like, you know, in my early getting to accept the diagnosis phase, it just was, it was super meaningful. So there, there are rich opportunities for coaching discussions around books like that. And then, like you mentioned, Power of Habit, that would be another one that you know, rich coaching opportunities around productivity. There's a lot of different ways to go with this. And, you know, we've been looking for some ideas. We've been looking to see what's out there. I don't know if anybody else has ideas or suggestions. So this is a group that we've been talking about facilitating, probably would meet maybe weekly uh, online. Um, so if you're interested in this, if you have any ideas about this, if you want to get involved, uh, in this. I think it's a really neat way to uh, kind of collaborate and to to take some of the the concepts of good intentions and turning them into actions around 
uh, a book because I know for me, like inspiration is also a really um, dr- a powerful driver of behavior. When I'm feeling stuck, I, I, I'll go to, you know, watch a good TED Talks and I feel like recharged again. So I think that that mm-hmm. books really have a power to do that. Um, and I think that sometimes, you know, we, we fly through a book, we're like, oh, wow, that was so good. And then we, we move on to the next book where I think we would get more value from it by really studying that book and really being deliberate and having discussions about it um, to, to really help take the, the lessons and the, the things that we are learning from, uh, from that book um, and really expanding it into our lives and into practice and, and connecting with others on that. Yeah, there uh, are so many opportunities. And for me, I would like to because I'm obsessed with audiobooks, I really go through several a week. And I find, you know, I need people to to talk to about some of them. (laughs) Otherwise, I just bookmark stuff and take little notes and ponder it myself. But it's nice to be able to talk to other people about them. So what we'll do is, uh, you know, if you're in the ADHD rewired Facebook community, definitely, uh, when, uh, um, you know, comment on that. Also, you can reach out, uh, to me. Um, you can even use the, um, the coaching rewired, um, link that's on my website. Just go to ADHDrewired.com and there'll be a link, um, up there for, for the coaching, uh, group site because we do have summer sessions for, uh, ADHD rewired coaching and accountability, uh, that are going to be starting, um, very soon. I've already been talking to a number of people who are interested and want are getting involved in this. Um, so lots of, of really great things coming up, uh, this summer. Um, with ADHD rewired and ADHD rewired coaching and, um, looking at doing a standalone study hall, um, for, uh, for that. And I'll have more information on that later, um, probably next week. So, um, that's all the time that we have. I, I wish we can keep on going, but I think the client that is in my waiting room right now will start to get annoyed. Uh, I've been waiting for the random question round. I may have to call you back. <laughs> <laughs> I've been preparing for it. That's okay. okay. You ask enough random questions to me. Just, <laughs> I think you're covered. <laughs> Are you, you going to be around later? Yes. Okay, I'm going to call you back for the random question round. <laughs> you don't, and now you're going to think about it, and it won't be so random. No, I'm not going to think about it. Okay, I trust you that you won't think about it. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm going to see if I can just put the recording on pause um, and then we'll just kind of jump right back into it. So um, I will call you in about, let me just look at my calendar real quick. Instead of your watch. It's, okay. I'm not going anyplace for a okay. while. I will, I will contact you in about an hour. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. See ya. So Carolyn, this is time for the random question around. This is the part of the show that has nothing to do with ADHD, which then paradoxically has everything to do with ADHD. Are you ready? I'm ready. Now, this is the first time that we've had to to separate this part of the conversation because I had a <laughs> client, so I, uh, now I'm, I'm just calling you back now after my client session. Um, and you wanted to really make sure that I didn't have anything planned. And I promised you that I didn't, but I said that I'm still going to start with my standard question of the, the invention question. And then you said, well, you can't ask me that because I have a lot of really good inventions and I don't want to share them. So, um, (laughs) would you share some of the ones that you just shared with me that have already come out that you supposedly thought of, um, but then came out? Okay. Well, the one of the ones that was really strong for a while was peanut butter in a stick. Now, like you have butter in a stick. Well, the, what's nice about butter in a stick is that it has the little things that tell you, okay, here's a tablespoon, you know, here's more. Here's a, a you know, four of those things is a quarter cup or whatever. Well, if you're baking cookies or something like that, that sort of measurement is really handy to have instead of scooping it out of a jar getting your hands all messy you know then then putting it in a measuring cup and all that sort of stuff so i i was young when i came out with this one i really remember it and i didn't i kind of kept it to myself i told some people and then wouldn't you know next to the crisco in the baking aisle one day i see like 
Jeff and a stick. <laughs> Do you remember that? Uh, I think it was like an old like Sesame Street episode where it was that the, the girl that was like sitting in the rocking chair, but the rocking chair was like huge, so it made her seem small. And, yeah, and was, she was like, a repeat guest on that, wasn't she? And it was a, it was like the, the whole line was like, um, so a loaf of bread, a container of milk, and a stick of butter. So now I'm thinking of like a stick of peanut butter. I don't remember that part. I just remember her. She had she had pigtails, I think. And the long stockings, like the striped stockings, I think. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Are you sure she didn't have peanut butter? I'm pretty sure it was just regular butter. Hmm. Yeah, because I don't think that was invented yet. <laughs> no, but when it's... you first said the stick of peanut butter, my first thought was, like, what are those those um those cheesy cracker things that have like the stick crackers that you dip it into the, the oh, thing that's yes, supposed yeah, to be yeah, like yeah. cheese like yeah. that's what, kind of what I was envisioning it was like a stick of peanut butter but like a thin long stick oh no that, that wouldn't really work too well because it would need to be like more congealed or like harder yeah. sort of yeah I was thinking like you know something that would be it would be harder because you would want to keep it in the refrigerator so that it would cut smoothly Mm-hmm. And then you could just set it out for a little bit, and it was soften enough for your you to use. Or I love peanut butter. You do? I do. It's one of my favorite foods. I, I put I put some in my smoothie every morning. I remember reading that. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's great. Know. It's it's uh, that's delicious. Do you like Chubby Hubby from Ben and Jerry's? Um, probably. I haven't met many flavors of Ben and Jerry that I don't like. This is the one that's got the chocolate-covered peanut butter-filled pretzels in it. Yes, amazing. Oh, I just forgot I what it's called. Because <laughs> it's, yeah. it's been a while since I've had Ben & Jerry's. Because I, um, cause for me, one of those pints, that's, that's a serving. And well, they make little ones, I know. too. But not chubby. I, I love ice cream. I, it's, I, I don't bring it to the house, though, because I don't have very good uh, willpower when it comes to that stuff. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I love, I love me some good chocolate. Um, no, I'm a vanilla girl. Oh, so I, you know what I used to do? I would take a scoop of, of peanut butter, and then I would I would uh, open up a bag of cho- chocolate chips, and then I would just dip oh, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and dip the I, peanut I butter. You don't even have to go any further. Like the best would too when you would get like the hollowed out, um, like bunny rabbits. You know, around the Easter time, Peeps? they would have. No, 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 the hollowed out chocolate. Like, okay, okay. At, they would have them like around Easter time. Are you going to tell me that holidays. you put peanut butter in that? Yes. I've never thought about that, and that's brilliant. It's already hollowed out. And I think that the, the uh, Easter um, uh, Reese's peanut butter cup are the best form of Reese, Reese's peanut butter cup. They have the proper ratio, right? It does. It does. Because the chocolate's thin, the peanut butter's thick. It's, it's amazing. That's like a. Um, if I were to go to McDonald's and get a cheeseburger, it's got to have just one patty on it. And that's like 89 cents. And the double cheeseburger is 99 cents. And my husband's always like, get the double cheeseburger. Or he'll just think that he could order me the double cheeseburger because it's a better value. But I won't eat it because it's the ratio of meat to bun to cheese is not I don't right think I've had a, a cheeseburger from McDonald's in probably like 15 years. Oh, it's, it's not very often that I do. You know, I, 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 For a long time, I was in a very kind of a rigid no McDonald's, but I occasionally will uh, go through the drive through and get like an ice cream cone. So um, I'm a fat yes, kid at heart, and I really like okay. sweets. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You know, last night we went for ice cream and um, my, I was watching my son, the way he eats it, Alex, the one we were talking mm-hmm. about earlier. And he is such, he is so my child, like the high maintenance asking for <laughs> stuff that's not on the menu kind of kid. So he ordered a cone, but in a cup. So he takes the ice cream cone and then tips it so it's upside down in the cup. But he wanted twist ice cream, vanilla and chocolate, because he couldn't decide vanilla or chocolate. And then he wanted half of it dipped in chocolate sprinkles and half of it in rainbow sprinkles. <laughs> so he had a, a cup and a cone. So both of those options, the vanilla and chocolate options together, and then the two options of sprinkles together. And I'm like, brilliant. My, my freshman year of college, I was, when I was kind of a 
marketing advertising major. This is the year that I did very poorly、um, mm. and almost failed out.、Um, we had to come up with a, a product and then a marketing plan for it. And so my product was、uh, Last Bite ice cream cones. So it was because the, the best bite of the ice cream cone is that last bite、oh. where the ore kind of gets a little melty in like the, the wedges, you know? No, I can't do it because it's soggy. Oh, it's the best. I thought you were talking about like the bottom of the nutter butters where they're, they're chocolate. The bottom of the nutter butters? You know, the bottom of the cone of a nut. It, maybe I'm not, not a nutter butter. Are you thinking of drumsticks? Yes, thank you. Because nutter butters are those cookies that、mm-hmm. are shaped like peanuts.、Um, yeah, the, the bottom of the drumstick is all chocolate. I thought that's what you were talking about. No, but you, you could have. But, So, I like the last bite the best. So,、uh, to me, like, I would love to have like, just a couple、Where、of those last bites. Or they have like, the reservoir. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, it's like, literally like, a bite. Like, so, you, th- you can have like, a couple like, bites. Oh, and you could customize. You could put like, one little squirt flavor in each yep, one. y e a h you got it. You got it. <laughs> Brilliant, isn't it? Yeah.、So、they, what, they could just make those and just sell the bottom of the cones. It, Exactly. You could put jam in there. You could, I mean, why, marshmallow. Why, why just ice cream? Vegetables. N- Nutella. No. Oh, Nutella. <laughs> Remember seeing that commercial where it was like they were trying to pass it off as like a health food? No. Sorry, missed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably wasn't in my viewing area.、Um, okay, so. Sp- Let's,、uh, let's keep this moving. Okay. So tell me your ideal cookie. Oh, this one's easy. And it's not peanut butter. But honestly, it's a sugar cookie with frosting. Because I'm a frosting addict.、Mm. So just like a frosted, like old school sugar cookie, cutout cookie with like homemade frosting. Mm. That's it. Now, do you like birthday cake frosting? I'm, I love frosting. <laughs> you, you've never met a frosting you haven't liked? Not really.、Um, my mother used to make this one frosting on my birthday. She called it like a seven minute boiled frosting.、Hmm. Um, and that's it's a non traditional frosting, the way it tastes. Like, I, I don't know. I can't describe it. But. I do really like that one, but I, I, no, I will eat frosting by the jar full. <laughs> <laughs> I just finished a jar last night. Oh my gosh, that's really funny.、Um, It's always vanilla or like buttercream though. Oh, interesting. I don't like birthday cake. Like, to, it's. I won't. I don't it, it, falls into the category of things, it falls into the category of things that I, like, I kind of want to like, but like, I don't. Mm. Well, I sit next to my older son and he eats the cake, but not the frosting. So we just switch. That's a good, that's a good pairing.、Mm-hmm. Works out well. Okay.、Um, my next question. I'm ready. I'm like, like in a, I'm in like a, you know, like a, a stance, like it's a game show. I'm going to hit the buzzer. I don't know why this question just came to my mind, but it's the random question around. So I'm going to ask it to you. What's the root of all evil? <laughs> Oh, honestly, hmm. I want to say, I want to, what's coming to me is not money, but rather, you know,、um, comparison. I don't know if it's more like a jealousy versus、mm. not accepting yourself, or、uh, that's what's coming to me. Because even if you talk about money, that, that only makes sense. When you talk about what you have versus what somebody else doesn't、mm. have, so the whole comparison notion comes in. I can't sum that up to one word,、mm-hmm. but、um, I don't like it's got to be something with I, I just, I guess, comparing and not okay. I don't know. Comparison, but not accepting what you have, not being grateful for what you have, lack of gratitude.、Mm-hmm. I, I hear what you're saying.、Oh, thank you. 
then what word would you choose? I'm going to flip this back. <laughs> what word would I choose? Um, I think just com comparison. Um, the... Um, it probably is a word. It'll come to us later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, do people know about the new feature on iPhone Messenger that we've been having fun with? Oh my gosh. <laughs> on Facebook Messenger. Yes, on, on, <laughs> on Facebook Messenger, there are now this whole series of like apps that, that um, it's, it's like app suite. So I made a, um, what is it called? A, a bit. Um, yeah, you like the bit strip things yeah, that some people <laughs> like, but they have tons of them. And then I, I thought, did you see what I sent you this morning? The, um, the, uh, jet, the, what is it called? The jib jab? Oh, I, <laughs> I just saw that. Oh, you haven't, see, you haven't seen it yet? I, I just saw it now. Earlier, um, because your other message came up, all I saw was just like the body, but I realized you put my head on the body. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So it's just this whole suite of, so you can make a cartoon basically of yourself um, and then you can put faces on uh, like animated GIFs. Is it GIF or GIF? GIF? I, I... Well, ask Jim or Jim. <laughs> Jim, Jim with the G, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so um, if you were a superhero who okay. would you be why would this be me a superhero hmm. or do i have to pick one that already exists yeah why don't you do that or make one up but you gotta give well, it like okay first of all tom nardone has completely ruined superhero women for me because <laughs> i used to totally like think if i could be the you know i would go for wonder woman but he he ruined that for me because I can't picture Wonder Woman without his head on top of her body. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Um, I really, I used to really like her. There's not too many like good female ones. So if you had a superpower, what would it be? Um, hmm. It would be nice to fly because I'm usually running late to things. <laughs> I could just fly over and get there. <laughs> that would be great. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Mind reading would be okay, but I don't really know if I want all that drama in my life. Yeah, sometimes it's probably best to not know what someone's thinking yeah. about you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do. Uh, honestly, it would be. I would prefer to have like a healing power that I could touch somebody mm. and have them healed. Hmm. Cause then I would heal so many people. But of course, if I'm late getting there, the flying power would really come in handy. <laughs> okay, here, here's a question. Okay. If you can face off against anyone that you wanted to in a hot dog eating contest, who would it be? Um, Hmm. Part of me wants to. I don't even really like. Hot... See, uh, is that, I have. I like to that you're win. equally considering the question, and at the same time, are slightly I... repulsed by the question. <laughs> well, because here's the thing: when I've watched these people do those, they dunk buns. They dunk the buns in water, which totally repulses me. I'm not a dunker. I'm not a ever. Like I cannot have anything get soggy by any sort of fluid I cannot eat it like there's no dunking donuts in coffee there's oh, no I love that there's no croutons in soup or crackers in soup never I can't do it it really really you know just... what one of my favorite things I do each night is I have a cup of tea and I, uh, I dip graham crackers in it no I can't do that so I'm kind of thrown like I if I'm gonna eat a hot dog I, it's gonna have to be dry Okay. So that now I need to strategically pick my partner because I have to win. So um, I'm thinking, like, is there a good vegetarian <laughs> out there? 
I mean, I don't want to call. I mean, they could be like soy dogs, to... I suppose. I'm not eating a soy dog. <laughs> Tom Nardone might eat a soy dog with you. I know. No, he he's into tofu now. Yeah, right? he's he's kind of is. It's <laughs> weird. I was not expecting that. Yeah, it was like I thought he'd be more repulsed by it, and he's kind of. I, th- I think he actually likes it. I think he does too. Hmm. You know, I, I'm just gonna. I'll pick. I'll pick my my friend Jenny because I. I <laughs> yeah, I just think that would be fun. Okay. All right. Have you read Tom's book? I'm almost done with it. Are you? So, See, I, now, so I just got it. It's such a difference. It's okay. You have the hard copy. I, I have it on Kindle. I, I have the hard copy with a personalized note. Yeah. That was very very nice. Now, mm. since, since you've read most of his book called uh, Chasing Kites. Um, and I, I heard him talk a little bit about one of the, the, the people he grew up with uh, um, on his most recent episode, um, which is making me even more excited to read this book because it was the things that this kid that was doing that he was friends with is horrifying. Um, oh my God, <laughs> yes. So here's my last random question for you. Yeah. Chasing Kites, would you give it a different name? And if so, what would the name be based on what you've read so far? Okay, well, here's the thing. Um, I think Eric's are, or I mean, I've just read Eric on the screen. So, I'm Eric. Uh, nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you, <laughs> Mr. Tiffers. And you, I, Tom's been on the show and he, he has already told you how, like, I wrote that back thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in that, like, I, I talked to him a lot about the title mm-hmm. and I know where the title comes from. I know Yvonne helped him name the title, you know, come up with it, and mm-hmm. she picked it. So I wouldn't pick another title because Yvonne is really awesome, and I love the way that that she and and Tom connect with each other. So I, I, I would never change the title. You play that so safe. But I wouldn't. Yeah, because, because, you know, because like, it fits. I know the no, I know the story behind the title, and. So I, I just so I'll, I would never I'll, I know on, on the back of the book. Let me let me read the back of his his book for a moment because I, th- I think it's a, a book that people should should go get. Um, what would it be like to live in a world of distractibility? Your attention is drawn away with the glimpse of a red kite in the sky. As you watch it, everything around you disappears from your consciousness. Even when you want to concentrate, your attention floats and bobs on a breeze you cannot see or control. Follow Tom Nardone through his experiences living with ADHD from a childhood where neither children nor adults understood to an adult of fulfillment with a diagnosis, treatment, and family of his own. Tom Nardone candidly exposes him himself no his thoughts yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how i read it um and uh t- this talks about his his um the effects of his adhd on the choices he's made his job performance and his relationships i think candid would be an understated word um because yes. he he tells it like it is and uh so i would grab tom's book if i were you um i did not write that part i didn't but whoever wrote that part that was a really good yeah, yeah, I think I wrote the blurb for like the website or where you order it from. Okay, and I think it said. I, I wish I can just plug in right now. Um, um, you know, I wonder if Tom's available. We should message him and see if we can get him on here right now. Just, just I'll do it. <laughs> wait, I, I'm gonna. Um, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Some I honestly, that book. Um, what was cool about it was on reading it in Kindle. You know how like sometimes parts of it will come out as highlighted if other people have already hide- mm-hmm. highlighted them frequently. So the first day it came out, I got it and I started reading it and I noticed that there were parts of it already highlighted. Oh, cool. So I sent it to, I sent him some of those parts. I'm like, do you know what this means? I'm like, it means people are actually reading it. But the other funny thing is um, I found it Wait, let me, I can't, I, are you there? So the first day that I, that it came out, um, I was looking for it and I found this picture that came up. Um, and I'm like, what is it? It, it was a picture of 
Tom's little like face that he, you know, the his little, I think it's like his bit strip yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On a t shirt that said, like, I am Tom Nardone. Oh, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> and it was from that Zazzle place where you can, um, like, order your own customized stuff. So I sent it to him and I'm like, what, what is this? And I actually have it, like, in, it said tomdardone.net and it's got a picture of him and this is a Tom Nardone avatar t-shirt you could buy for twenty nine b five. So oh. I wrote, I'm like, send him this picture. I'm like, what? WTF. So he's like, ha 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 ha, that is awesome. I go, did you know about that? No. Ha 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 ha, but that is awesome. So anyway, I'm like, you got to get one for everybody in your family. I said, who orders these things? <laughs> I can't believe that this is a regular stock item. I I don't know if I was talking well, to you or to him, but I think like he uh, yeah, realized no, I'll later. Yeah, I'll tell you the rest of the story. Okay, so then later on, um, that was at 3.30. So at, at like 8 o'clock, I get this message back from him. So you know his mind's been working on it the whole time. This was the first day his book comes out. And then he says, this is my store. I forgot I made things for myself to buy. <laughs> and then he sends me a picture of him in his like onesie pajamas that he wears on a pillow that says, I am Tom Nardone. Sleep with me. <laughs> that is too much. Oh, I know. I, I, I know. I, it, was, it was great that he had forgotten all about it and was totally surprised like on opening day that oh he's gonna be totally <laughs> bummed that he that he missed the chance to uh hop on on the show real quick but i just looked it up online you can get it at redmondpro.com slash book oh this is gonna be hard book dash store slash or slash <laughs> <laughs> chasing dash kites and a yes just check the, the show notes yes check <laughs> the show notes uh because we'll, we'll we'll link that up um, so we're going to wrap it up there. Um, I, I wish I could be a fly in the wall when I see Tom see this message. Um, we should try to somehow put a picture of the I am Tom Nar don't sleep with me pillow up there. <laughs> in the show notes? Yeah. All right. Well, we'll figure something out. <laughs> and I'm totally distracted by looking at his Facebook page because he has a lot of um, interesting things on it. You know what I think would be interesting um, if if we created like you had your little store with you mm -hmm. on there as a doll <laughs> for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> What we should eat, we, no, Tom and I should actually each create our own doll and then have a, a, a contest of who can sell more. Oh, see, I was thinking of, you know, those that Rock'em Sock'em game? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, like, you would do. You guys would each be rocking them and socking them. That's awesome. Yeah, well, you see, I don't know. Because we all know that, that Tom's an attention <laughs> whore. <laughs> But oh yeah, he, yeah. He, he does use that word, doesn't he? He does. He loves it. Yeah, it's questionable. A lot, of, a lot of things that Tom Nardone does is questionable. That's why I like him. Uh, you know, uh, here's the biggest thing: is that he he he, he says he doesn't care, right? Mm -hmm. But he totally he does. Totally cares. Yes. <laughs> and he's going to be thrilled that you talk about him. Well. Tom and I have really become good friends uh, over the course of, I don't know, the last year or so. Um, so it's, uh, I, I enjoy Tom. I do Tom too. is my guilty pleasure. Yeah. So here's your choice. Tom Nardone or bottom of the ice cream cone. <laughs> Wait, is this a question? Yes. A choice of what? Uh, like, okay. Like, who would I rather talk to? Well, Tom. No, an ice cream cone no, is like, be... if you could only... 
So here's the... Okay, it's... I don't want to say if you can only have one in your life. <laughs> that's, that's totally where I was going with it. Okay. <laughs> now, what if Tom brings the ice cream? No. Mm. This just isn't a fair question. <laughs> okay. So I think we should wrap it up right there. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, Carolyn, thank you for uh, for doing this. Thanks for calling me back for the random question round. Because I listen to this all the time, and I'm thinking, what's my random question round going to be? And then you're like, well, we got to go. <laughs> what? And the look of, of disappointment on your face was, I, I, just, I couldn't take it. So, okay. um, again, thank you for, for spending time with us. And uh, you, know, you guys will all be seeing and hearing more from Carolyn um in the future um and uh we're gonna talk after about getting a uh a crowdfunding uh thing going so we can um help get this uh um the, the glucose monitoring system that uh uh could you know truly save lives and um get this for your son um so we'll we'll talk about that after the show and uh look for the link to that on the show notes and um uh, thank you Thank you. Thank you for listening to another episode of ADHD Rewired. And if you're new to the show, welcome to the ADHD Rewired podcast. You can see a full outline of this episode with all the links and other resources mentioned at ADHDrewired.com. ADHD Rewired Summer Coaching Groups are now forming. Schedule your free 20-minute consultation with me at coachingrewired.com. I know I can help you get closer to where you want to be. If you're ready to be more productive, don't let this opportunity pass you by. Go to coachingrewired.com. Help support this podcast by checking out my sponsors at erictibbers.com slash zoom and erictibbers.com slash audible. And next time you shop Amazon, use the search portal at ADHDrewired.com. And you can also show support for this podcast by leaving an honest review in iTunes or Stitcher. Don't just be a passive listener, be an active member of the ADHD Rewired community. We are on Facebook. You can like our page, but submit your request to join our free and growing community. We are just a few shy of 200 members. And don't forget to check your other inbox. Thank you to everyone who filled out the survey for the ADHD Rewired book. We just did a raffle. And we have a winner. And the winner is Doug, Doug H. I've already messaged you on Facebook, but I haven't heard back, so I'm just using your last initial. Congratulations, you have won the ADHD Rewired Mystery Box of Awesomeness. So I do have one request. When you get this in the mail, please set up your video camera on your phone and record yourself opening it and then post that on the Facebook page. Thanks. Do you have a question or comment that you want played on an upcoming show? Go to speakpipe.com slash ADHD rewired from your computer or from the SpeakPipe app on your mobile phone. I want to thank Carolyn Dargenio for being a great guest and for helping me write my book. And please, in honor of my client who tragically lost his life this week due to T1 diabetes, please join me in raising the funds so we can help Alex, Carolyn's son, get this monitoring system that might have saved my client's life. You can help by going to erictivers.com slash T1. That's erictivers.com slash T1. The letter T and the number one. Thanks for listening. And remember, out of every tragedy and every hardship, there are opportunities for growth and change. There is always something we can learn. Until next time.